Here you go. <laughs> to determine your chain pitch, what you do is you take your dial caliper and you measure center to center on the on the barrels. So it'll be center to center on two barrels on one link. And that's roughly it's like point four eight, eight six. Yep. Yep. Point All right. Four eight six. Yep. And that that's how you determine your chain pitch. And then installing and aligning the sprockets. And then the lab book has you use the twenty tooth and the thirty tooth sprockets. And they'll sit on a key shaft just like anything else. Sit on there. And then uh, lining these is the same way you would align. The, the belt drive lamp, take your ruler, and it has to touch the four point, uh, not on the center glass. It has to touch the four points, and that lines you up both ways, takes care of them both. There is two different ways for installing a chain. You have the, what'd you do with the chain? You have the chain puller, which actually what this does is you loosen it, there you go. and it'll grab each end of the oh. chain. And you pull it tight, but we didn't use that method. The second method we actually found easier, and the way to do that is we, it's called the sprocket method. You just put it on the sprocket like it's going to sit, and it lines up like that. That's, that's the method we actually chose because it seemed to be a lot easier for us. And then that way your chain's not too tight, you got a little room to work with. What'd you do with that master link? I got it. You Yeah. And, uh, oh. Grab that. I got hands like a walrus, I'm telling you. <laughs> what this is, I don't know if everybody can see this, it's called a master link. This is how you get the two ends of the chain to stay together. It involves this piece, which slides through the two barrel parts of the chain, and then you put your end on, which looks like that, and to hold it all together it has this clip right here. So you get your chain on. Okay. Probably do it the other way. Oh, that's going to be hard to get there. Oh, yeah. There go. go from the back side. <laughs> like that. Slide that on. There you go, Mr. Man Hands. Yeah. That's your portion. Screwdriver over there. Just take a screwdriver, pop that pin right on. We are going to show you how to determine your allowable sag. Yeah. Chain sag. Chain, allowable chain sag. What you do is you measure, measure shaft to shaft, center to center. center to center on the shafts. What do we get, like 14? Yeah, I believe it's 14 inches. Yeah, so you measure center to center on the two driving shafts, and then you times that by 4%. By 4%. Okay. And that'll okay. give you your allowable chain sag, which we came up with 0.55 of an inch. Yep. And then to measure your chain sag, to see where you're at, you put your right on. ruler across the top, and you actually measure how far down it goes. And right now, push it too. Yeah. Right now, it's obviously a lot over an inch, just because we left it loose so we could put the chain together. So now, we will actually take and tighten this portion back here up. Your jack nut, right? Yep. yep. So it'll tighten our chain, and then we will adjust until we have the allowable sag. And then tighten up the stop nut on your jack nut, yep. right? Because with vibrations, that's going to work that'll itself loose. And that'll loosen itself right back up. 0.55 bus. A little bit too much. What do you got? A little too much yet? Yeah. Okay. Tighten her down a little bit more. Yeah, you just repeat those steps until right. now that's tight. Go ahead and tighten that. Yep. Nut on the Jones there. Yeah. All done. Sweet. And then you have a fully operational system. You want to stir it up? We'll show you. Sure. Put the guards Unlock back on. Easy. Unlock your blackout tag out. Right? Safety shields on. Jesus. Gun 